Hello everyone, this is Enea here, and in today's tutorial I'll teach you how to create this flower string art figure in Affinity Designer. Not long ago I already recorded a tutorial on how to create a flower string art figure in Affinity Designer, and it was rather well received. So I decided to record one more tutorial about the topic. So today's figure is going to be a bit different, it is going to be based on an hexagon rather than on a square, so it will be a bit more difficult but still doable if you follow the right method. So to get started we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it 2000 by 2000 pixels in dimensions and we click on Create and then we make sure that Snapping, Snap to Grid, Snap to Guides and Snap to Object Bounding Boxes are enabled and then we go to View, Guides and we add some horizontal and vertical center guides to the composition. And then we take the rectangle tool, we set the fill to black and the stroke to none, and then we draw a black square all over the composition. And then we're going to set up the grid, so we go to view, grid and axis, we check on show grid. We set the color to white to make it visible and then we go to the basic tab to set the spacing. So for this particular figure I will set the spacing to 25 pixels. And then we'll click on close. So now we have the grid set up and we can start drawing the figure. So with the rectangle tool again, we set the fill to none and the stroke to white and the stroke width to one point. And then we go ahead and we draw a rectangle. And we give it 500 by 500 pixels in the transform panel. And then we take the move tool and we position the rectangle so that its right extremity matches the vertical axis and its bottom extremity matches the horizontal axis. And then we are going to start connecting its equidistant points on its top and right extremity. So we take the pen tool and we are going to start from the first point on the grid on its top extremity and we connect it to the first point on the grid on its right extremity. So this creates the first line and then we press on escape to unselect. And then we connect the second point on the top extremity on the grid to the second point on its right extremity. And then we press on escape one select and then we connect the third point on the top to the third point on the right and then we press on escape to unselect and then we're going to continue the process to connect each point on its top extremity to its equivalent point on its right extremity And we don't forget to press escape after each connected line. Okay, so now that we have connected all the points on the top and on the right extremity of the rectangle, the next step is going to be to remove the left and the bottom extremity of the rectangle. So we select the rectangle. And then we go here to Layer, Convert to Curves. 
So we first need to convert it into curves in order to be able to break it with the node tool. So we take the node tool and we select the top left corner of the rectangle. And then we go here to break curve, to break it at that point. And then we do the same thing with the bottom right corner. We go here to break curve. And then we take the move tool We select the bottom right part of the rectangle and we delete it. And then also we are going to hide the grid because we are not going to need it anymore. And then we're going to select all the lines that we've just drawn, as well as what remains of the rectangle and we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And then we press on Ctrl J to duplicate and we are going to flip the duplicated group horizontally. And then while holding shift, we bring it to the right until its left extremity snaps to the vertical guide. And then we select both groups and we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And then in order to turn it into an hexagon, when we duplicate it, we are going to need to stretch it and to know by how much we need to stretch it, we are going to use a diagonal guide. So in order to set a diagonal guide, we take the pen tool. And then with the same fill and stroke settings, we go ahead and we draw a line from top to bottom. And then with the move tool, we go here to enable transform origin to have the rotation center in the middle of the composition. And we are going to add 30 degrees to the rotation angle in the transform panel. So this is now our diagonal guide. And what we need to do is we take the group with the lines and we are going to stretch it up from here, from the midpoint at its top extremity until it snaps to the diagonal guide. So this is how we know that it is going to form an hexagon when we duplicate it. And then we can hide the guide and we can select the group again. And we set the rotation center in the middle of the composition. We press on enter to bring out the move duplicate panel. We check on duplicate, set the number of copies to five and the rotation angle to 60 degrees. And as you can see, now when we duplicate it, this creates a perfect hexagon with the six petals and we click on okay. And then we select all six groups of lines and we press on Ctrl G to group them together. So first we're going to scale it down. So we scale it down while holding Ctrl. And then we unselect and reselect it and we press on Ctrl J to duplicate. And we're going to rotate the duplicated group by 30 degrees. So now we have our two hexagons with the petals and we select both groups and press on Ctrl G to group them together. So now we are going to add the color. So we take the gradient tool, set the context to stroke and type to radial. The color in the middle, I will set it to a lighter shade of red. And the one at the extremity to a darker shade of red, slightly darker. Alright, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to create a flower string art figure in Affinity Designer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye!